You know, I got to be, I got to be honest with you here, boss. You don't want to give me that gun. Because I'll probably shoot you with it. This is Cecil with your Black Agenda Report morning shot for January 7th, 2011. In a historical moment such as 2011, if you deal with the Gregorian calendar, that is, the United Nations naming of this year as International Year of Afro-Descendants raises many sobering questions, such as, what could we possibly be celebrating? Secondly, if not by celebrating, how should this year be observed? So today we want to focus on an Afro-Venezuelan sociologist's recent piece regarding 2011. Esther Pineda has appropriately titled her essay, International Year of Afro-Descendants. The declaration of 2011 as International Year of Afro-Descendants constitutes a tacit recognition of the historic process of exclusion, oppression, and subordination that Africans and African descendants have been victims of as a consequence of the establishment of a European mercantilistic economic model and policy of colonial enslavement. For this reason, 2011 shouldn't be diluted in trivial celebrations of blackness. Although dances, music, foods, arts, and dress do constitute key elements of our cultural heritage, 2011 should not be positioned as a characteristic and one-dimensional representation of Africanness. 2011 should not be a year for the trivial exhibition of the exotic and the different, nor should it turn into a spectacle of black subjects for white spectators. The World Year of African People should be consolidated as the stage and opportunity to remember, make visible, and transmit our history, unknown by many, including ourselves. More than a year to celebrate Afro-descendants, it should be a year to remember that the presence of African people in this continent is not at random, neither is it a product of tourism or voluntary migration. It is necessary to make visible, as Fanon put it, the progressive burial of cultural originality of our people brought about by colonialism. Therefore, the emphasis shouldn't be only placed on the commemoration of liberation from the colonial yoke. We cannot let the fact that this independence was generated as a social explosion in a historically oppressed continent be glossed over. Africans refused to be kept in submission to the arbitrary actions of French, Spanish, and Portuguese colonies that were implanted with the beginning of the so-called slave trade. This colonization was based on the ideology of disdain towards the black man, which was in turn used to justify the expropriation of his land, his enslavement in his own territory, thereby dehumanizing being African and of African descent as a mechanism to legitimize a historical oppression. Therefore, all the more pertinent is the appropriation of this year by African peoples ourselves, the dismantling of the hegemonic racist discourse and the inclusion of our traditional discourse, which was previously conceived as peripheral. The International Year of Afro-Descendants must be an opportunity to democratize Afro-Descendancy. The people should launch their struggle, make themselves aware of the necessity of their self-affirmation and self-recognition. The black struggle cannot remain as it has been until this point, kidnapped by Afro-academic and Afro-intellectual elites. The Afro-Descendant fight should be actively participatory and at the reach of everyone. We have the opportunity to make proposals, make ourselves heard by our respective states, Demand responses to our needs of political participation and citizenship. Demand resources where there still does not exist a legal framework capable of recognizing and preserving the diversity of which we form part and which is oriented to guarantee the effective respect of our many times sullied human rights. This is a year to encourage self-recognition, self-affirmation, and Afro-descendant participation in those spaces historically denied to us. It is the moment to understand and deconstruct the ideology of disdain theft and plundering since which we were exploited for the benefit and constructions of empires that oppress us to this day. It will depend on us and our organization as collectives and the creation of leadership that destroys the alienation experienced by Afro-descendants and moves us towards the eradication of racism, self-hatred, and the exclusion of African people. Now whether you call yourself a Pan-Africanist or African internationalist, it will once again prove crucial to study the struggles of Africans in the misnamed region of Latin America who see potential openings for demands and participation in political processes governed by the resurgent and perhaps more inclusive left. If anything, the proper lesson to be learned in the language of this analysis is a strict adherence to consistent organizing independent of the governments in power. Africans here have all but obliterated that possibility given the rise of old dirty Obama, 
So we who have yet to drown in Kool-Aid should be in constant dialogue with our diasporic shipmates, lest any of us begin believing we are actually part of these artificial borders created by our captors. I just met the most marvelous bunch of niggers. <laughs> the, the most marvelous bunch of You get him? <laughs>